Yeah, so this is the list of point cloud formats that we support today and this list is obviously will, will be bigger uh, by next year and uh, you have the ability to combine or work as, as we already showed uh, to work uh, with all these formats like vector and raster together with point clouds. Uh, for uh, last uh, support, we support uh, uh, last Z compression. Uh, it's a German technology where you can uh, run your files, uh, save your last files uh, in a compressed form, and you can compare some numbers. Uh, these are for colored last files, so they're probably two and a half times smaller, and even better numbers for intensity only point clouds uh, it's about four or five times sometimes it can be up to eight times smaller files yeah that's a free bit of software made by our good friend Martin Eisenberg out in Germany and thanks Martin for making that available to basically the whole community to use and benefit from because when things are gigabytes in size saving a gigabyte here or there it starts to add up and it can add up substantially again go to lazzip.org for more information but the main thing from an FB point of view is it's just built in and you just can read this anywhere we read a last file and if you're writing you just say to compress and off you go uh, or we can of course we have data inspector uh, application where you can uh, view uh, point clouds and uh, what is really good about data inspector is that you can bring uh, all those hundreds of formats that we can read together and inspect them together okay so uh, of course we can reproject uh, our point clouds uh, in a few ways. Uh, we, uh, for one of the vendors, uh, it was crucial to have uh, geocentric uh, coordinate support and orthometric height. So we, we added it in 2012. So, and here is a nice illustration how we support uh, geocentric coordinates. And in, 2000, in FEMI 2013, we added a Blue Marble reprojection engine and the new transformer, uh, yes. BMG reprojector. We can, uh, the next uh, slide, we can tile uh, the point clouds. Uh, it is one of the uh, reasons for tiling is obvious, for example, smaller pieces for delivery of them. Uh, but another thing I found is very useful that point clouds, when you tile them, uh, you can uh, speed up your processing time uh, by organizing uh, a few processes in parallel. Uh, another interesting option here uh, we added in, in 2013 is a seed point. So if you have your tiles uh, 500 by 500, you don't have to, your, your uh, edges of your tiles don't have to end with 500 or Three zero, so you can set any point uh, for your grid to go through. Right, and that's a big, a big deal because sometimes people want the tiles aligned to certain coordinates. Now, uh, clipping um, just any arbitrary boundary will clip your point cloud. And here, I would like to mention that we added parallel processing. So you can, if you have multiple clippers, you can organize multiple processes and run them uh, simultaneously. Uh, but I would recommend going to FMEpedia and read the article about parallel processing before you uh, use this capability. We'll, we'll have a link on that at the end here. Yeah. So uh, we try to clip really huge point clouds, over 1 billion points, uh, 40 gigabyte uh, single file, and uh, within, uh, say, three to four hours, you can get manageable pieces out of such a huge point cloud. Yes. So that one of the customers asked, is there any practical limit on the size of point cloud files that we deal with? Well, uh, it is not that easy to deal with the 40 uh, gigabyte files. Yes. So it's, it makes sense to reduce the size to uh, 200, 400 uh, megabytes. Yeah, but FME itself is fine with, with yes, yes, it just these things. Take, takes time. It just takes time. So there's no, I think that we actually did run into some issues for a while with the last format itself, um, with the files getting too large for the last format to, to handle. And so uh, that was briefly an issue with, because, uh, but anyway, we, we got past that yeah. on some platforms. So, so actually, yes, there is no practical limit, although practically, 
you don't want to deal with files that are just individually so massive because you can hardly transport them around. Now, uh, we have um, cubic clipping. Uh, if you supply solids as clippers, you can uh, easily clip your point clouds in 3D. Uh, here is an example where I built uh, stacks of uh, small one meter high boxes and then I analyze how many points I have per each box and setting a certain threshold I can separate uh, surface from the rest of the point or the points. So here is an example how I clean uh, everything from uh, from trees, uh, street lights, buildings. Uh, it is not a true feature extraction, but in some flat areas that may work quite well. Uh, we can thin point clouds. If so, if you have massive point clouds or you combine lots of point clouds together, you need a, an overview. You can uh, thin the, the point cloud with some options. And we are working on some more advanced uh, thinning options for future FME uh, versions. We can build surfaces. Uh, and we already saw that in our first demo. And again, we have here uh, the ability to split. The, if you have multiple last files, for example, you can run them in parallel to generate multiple surfaces. Right. So the parallel processing can help to speed. And again, we'll have the link at the end. But again, one customer was asking, how do they make 3D models out of out of point clouds? And so here's an example. This will do a, really a 2.5D. It's meant for... Um, creating surfaces of, uh, of top topography, that sort of thing. Yeah. It isn't meant for taking a scan of a building that's taken from the ground and building a 3D model there. We don't do that. Uh, we can combine point clouds. So uh, We already saw that in our first demo, uh, but uh, we also can combine uh, just about any geometry, uh, any geometry to a point cloud. Uh, here is a, a few example, examples. Uh, this image represents uh, Germany uh, with some church uh, in it. Uh, it was made from two rasters, one RGB, one DEM, and a SketchUp model, and combined into a point cloud. This is a augmented reality where we added these two cars, which weren't originally there. And another example, I added these trees from a SketchUp model, and as you can see, we also use the textures that uh, the original tree had uh, to make it into uh, into point cloud colors. Yes, so that's really quite impressive because it means you can augment point clouds with SketchUp models or other 3D models you might have and create new point clouds. Sometimes point cloud visualization is the tool you want to do and so FME makes it very easy to, to do these sorts of things. The opposite of feature extraction. Feature injection, perhaps. Uh, now, we can split point clouds. Uh, some obvious splitting is... Yes. One customer was asking, do we use clipping to make bare earth models? But actually, splitting would be a better way and take the last return. Yeah, if you have classification or returns, you can split by those um, components. Or we also added some interesting uh, possibilities with splitting by color or by intensity. Uh, for, um, for example, we can extract uh, some road marking from the road surface. I tried that on, uh, on a bigger example, so here is another example of extracting yellow color and here I extract white, so it is all possible. Here I have to analyze the shape of the, uh, of the features extracted because we have lots of white, but it is all possible. Uh, we already showed this point cloud and raster component setter. It has such a well long name because we can set not only color, but color is probably the most popular one. Right. So you can set intensity. You could set other components. Classification. If you have a raster that has classes there, yes. you can transfer them to your point cloud. Right. And this combined with the expression evaluator would let you, you could even set elevations or, or make other kinds of uh, but, results. Yeah, lots of interesting. Uh, so again, some scenes from Langley. The Langley folks had us do that. Thanks very much, Langley friends. Uh, we can uh, f uh, inspect point clouds, uh, compare the header versus real actual or actual points, 
and, uh, and extract uh, all the components that we have there, uh, enforce true extents and re retrieve mean and max components. At the end, I will show uh, another demo using this transformer, but in general case, that's what you would see before and after when you match your header of, for example, a last file with the actual content of the file. Right. Uh, we have some solutions for ArcGIS. We can generate LASD files, which allow you to open uh, LAS file collections in ArcGIS. Right, and that's, so that streamlines workflows for those folks that are going to be using point clouds afterwards in ArcGIS. So you can just flip that switch on in, uh, in the workbench, and when you run your translation, you'll automatically have the LASD that lets you instantly view in ArcGIS. So. There it is. Uh, that was another uh, customer-driven request to um, make some profiles or slices, uh, profiles of certain width uh, of point clouds. We you, we used to run this demo in before, but now we show all new demos. So here's yeah. just just the results. It is impressive, and so you, the basic idea is: given a line as input and a point cloud, we will generate for you a bunch of slices along that line, perpendicular to that line, so you can view those for your for your work and for further analysis. So, and now uh, something new. Yes. Uh, calculations per point. We added a point cloud expression evaluator. Before uh, FME 2013, my favorite transformer was raster expression evaluator, but now I have this uh, transformer to play with. We also have another transformer similar to this one, which is point cloud filter, where based on some expressions, you can uh, get multiple point clouds. Now, uh, here you can see some numbers um, with tiling and clipping, but I made them on my old machine, so maybe we can, we can do better uh, today. These numbers are pretty pretty old, over t about two years old. Right, you so should we should run them, them again. Uh, and here is the link to Parallel Processing Art article on FMEpedia. Yes. Where you can read how you can organize those processes on your machine. 